In this lecture, we're going to discuss the neuromuscular junction. In order to do that, we have to remember what makes muscle tissue unique compared to all the other tissues. And what makes muscle tissue unique is that it has the ability to contract or shorten in length when stimulated by an electrical impulse, known as an action potential. So where does this electrical impulse or action potential come from? The action potential is initiated in an area in the brain called the primary motor cortex. From the primary motor cortex, the action potential will travel down the spinal cord through a motor neuron. And that motor neuron will synapse with another motor neuron from the peripheral nervous system before reaching the muscle. Once at the muscle, the action potential will initiate a cascade of events that causes a muscle contraction. So let's take a closer look at the nerve supply for a muscle fiber. Skeletal muscles contract when stimulated by motor neurons. And as mentioned before in a previous slide, motor neurons are nerve cells that send action potentials to the muscle fiber. In this illustration shown here, there are two motor neurons. One motor neuron is red, and the other motor neuron is purple. A muscle is not controlled by a single motor neuron. Instead, it's controlled by many motor neurons, which controls numerous muscle fibers. A motor neuron and all of the muscle fibers it innervates is called a motor unit. The word innervate means connects to and stimulates. So another definition of a motor unit, it's a motor neuron and all of the muscle fibers that it connects to and stimulates. In the illustration shown here, there are two motor units. The first motor unit includes the red motor neuron and three muscle fibers that it innervates. And the second motor unit is controlled by a purple motor neuron and the two muscle fibers it innervates. Now we're going to take a closer look at a motor unit where an action potential is transferred from a motor neuron to the muscle fiber. This area is called the neuromuscular junction. The neuromuscular junction is a synapse between a motor neuron and a muscle fiber. First, we're going to take a look at all the parts of a neuromuscular junction that are associated with the motor neuron. The first part is called the axon terminal. The axon terminal is the end of a motor neuron. The membrane of the axon terminal is called the presynaptic membrane. At the axon terminal, you will find the following structures. The first structure is called the synaptic vesicles. Synaptic vesicles are filled with a neurotransmitter. A neurotransmitter is a chemical messenger. Also at the axon terminal, you will find voltage-gated calcium ion channels. Voltage-gated calcium ion channels open in response to a voltage or an action potential. Surrounding the axon terminal, you'll find free-floating calcium ions. And finally, at the end of the axon terminal, you'll find an open space where neurotransmitter diffuses across, called the synaptic cleft. Next, we look at the parts of the neuromuscular junction that are associated with the muscle fiber. The area of the muscle fiber where the motor neuron synapses with is sometimes referred to as the motor end plate. The first part of the neuromuscular junction associated with the skeletal muscle fiber is the sarcolemma. Remember, the sarcolemma is the cell membrane of the muscle fiber. On the sarcolemma, you will find chemical-gated sodium ion channels. Chemical-gated sodium ion channels open in response or in the presence of neurotransmitter. So when a neurotransmitter binds to a receptor on the chemical-gated sodium ion channel, the chemical-gated sodium ion channel will open. And finally, within the synaptic cleft, you will find free-floating sodium ions. So what are the events that take place at the neuromuscular junction during a muscle contraction? First, an action potential travels down to the axon terminal. That action potential stimulates the opening of voltage-gated calcium ion channels, and when open, allows calcium ions to diffuse into the axon terminal. Calcium ions in the axon terminal then stimulate synaptic vesicles to fuse to the presynaptic membrane of the axon terminal. By fusing to the presynaptic membrane of the axon terminal, synaptic vesicles are able to release the neurotransmitter into the synaptic cleft. The neurotransmitter that diffuses across the synaptic cleft binds to the receptor of a chemical-gated sodium ion channel. The binding of the neurotransmitter to the receptor causes the chemical-gated sodium ion channel to open, allowing sodium ions to diffuse across the sarcolemma and thus creating a new action potential within the muscle fiber.